Next topic that I want to show you and want to talk about is AI. I was pretty excited um, to test this stuff out the last couple of weeks. Um, more and more of these platforms popping up and um, honestly, uh, generative AI is probably not new to you because you've probably you've been using uh, ChatGPT and... But it's actually not so new anymore. But what is actually more like newish, I would say, is the progress that is happening on the 3D model generation side, because that is definitely something that was very much behind in terms of the quality of the results that you could expect. And that's why I was looking into a couple of the best pages, at least, which I think are the best at the moment. And you probably could be interested to see it as well. So first thing that I'm looking at is Meshi because that seems to be one of the best at the moment. First thing that I tested out was Meshi and um, I've just give you an example of what I tested. So not, not the thing that you see on the website and on the star page. Very simply, I had this prompt here and let's make it a little bigger. So I, I gave it this prompt like a low poly rabbit sitting, there's even a typo here. On a small barrel holding up a blank sign, the rabbit is smiling and what was the rest, I guess. There, were, there was a couple more words here. So I wanted a rabbit on a barrel, I wanted to hold up a sign and there is a stop sign and stuff, but it's a little more complex. So I wanted this not to be simply a, a rabbit, but some details that I wanted. And then we have uh, the results. Uh, probably have to zoom out a bit to show you the results. So this is the result number one, for example, that's a rabbit sitting on a, a small barrel holding a, up a blank sign. So at least you could say this is probably a rabbit, <laughs> and, but it doesn't have a sign. And the next one is a little different, but there's still no sign, I would say. This looks a little better here, which there is at least some sign here. Like I wanted to have like a blank sign because what I wanted is I wanted to have this rabbit holding up a sign where we can then put some letters on later. So in the post-production. Doesn't look too great. I think the best one actually is this one here. At least we have a rabbit on our little barrel and a blank sign. It's still not holding up the blank sign. It's like, but there is at least some sign. You see the resolution is still not the best. What you can do now is to say refine and What's happening then is that it's trying to make it a higher resolution. On my journey, I think if you're subscribed, you can create all of this crazy stuff here. And that's all AI generated images, right? So it's in terms of image generation, we are already so far and it's so crazy what you can do. Like just look at these images, right? This is AI generated content. This is not pictures. It's not taken by a camera. That is AI generated. And so we are pretty far in terms of image generation, but 3D model generation is still like, has to catch up a lot, I guess. It is almost, sometimes it's completely indistinguishable from a real picture, right? You won't be able to tell even today, if you show this to your friend, grandma, whatever, these people who are not, who've not been exposed to, to AI so much, they won't be able to tell the difference. It's, it's impossible, honestly. And for 3D model generation, it is catching up. So the refining of this model is now happening. Something that has been said a lot of times, but you're not going to be replaced by, by AI, but you're going to be replaced by a person that uses AI. That's the truth. There needs to be some system in place that watermarks AI-generated content so um, a system can detect that this is generated content and we can have rules that... Either we don't want to see AI generated content or we want to filter out specific types of generated content, whatever. Actually, the, yeah, the result is interesting because I wanted a low poly rabbit. <laughs> and first of all, I got a non, it wasn't actually so low poly. And now we got a low poly rabbit, right? So this is, this is what we got. Interesting, interesting result. So we can try something else now. A pig riding a motorcycle. Okay. So let's, let's do that. That sounds great. Pick riding motorcycle. Okay, so let's send the art style. Art style, we can select realistic cartoon sculpture, low poly. Probably want to do realistic maybe. Okay, so it's starting the process now. This is the, the first preview and let's see what comes out here. Okay, so we have a couple of things here. We have 
some motorcycles where there's no pig, but we definitely have a motorcycle pig or pig riding a motorcycle. And that, that looks like more like a motorcycle pig or pig motorcycle. This looks more like I think this is very close, at least it's closer. I'm, I'm curious, let's refine this one. <laughs> so much fun. And we should probably try to print this at some point, right? There's also a couple of other tools that are very similar. For example, Tripo. Um, so if we send the same prompt to this program, we can also check out what is going to happen. Um, by the way, I'm, if you wanted to, so we have these links, I'm um, just gonna put them in the video description after the fact so you can have them. Look at that! That looks already... Oh my goodness. You, I'm impressed, honestly. This is... Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is impressive. I'm, I'm curious to see the result from Meshi. I mean, this, this, but this is like, wow, the realism of this is... Whoa. Crazy. Let's take a look at this one here. And it's not yet the refined version, right? It's just a preview. Oh yeah, okay, we have the handles missing, but wow, that's that's gonna be difficult. Naked pig? <laughs> oh, that 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 pig doesn't have uh, hands, but maybe maybe in the refined version. And uh, this is this looks funny actually. This is why is it so small? Okay, this is this is clearly the worst. I don't know why this is such an outlier, but maybe the parameters have been. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is amazing, right? So I, I'm curious, like, there is maybe some issues here, but the leg is missing here. But let's just refine this. Completing in eight minutes. Okay, this, this, this takes some time. A little more than one year ago, when ChatGPT was released, like, around about the same time when ChatGPT was public for the first time, uh, there was also, very short after, there was a couple of these uh, 3D model generators, and it was terrible. Right? It was like unrecognizable stuff coming out of that, Un unless you were picking a very specific prompt that was probably kind of pre-trained, which gave you some kind of reasonable results, but it's getting better. And it's definitely getting better now. Some results that have, I mean, look at this, right? It is very much depending on the prompt itself, like high detailed, blah, blah, blah. So you have to use these attributes. We didn't, we didn't play around with that yet. If you want, if you apply more specific attributes, then you will also get better results, right? So look at this. I mean, this is definitely different and much higher quality, right? So this is interesting. You can definitely print this, right? This is, for example, this is impressive. And the prompt for that is not that very specific. I don't know why it's so detailed. Maybe we're gonna get something more detailed. Our pick is finished. Let's see. What do we get? Hmm. Uh, I'm not so happy, honestly. I don't know. The pick is somehow merged into the, the bicycle. That would need some work, I guess. <laughs> it's a good start, right? So it's, it's not too bad. What do we get here? This is finished already. Okay, that was fast. Uh, okay, so that didn't change too much, actually. So the preview was already unveiling the problems. I think the leg is supposed to be somewhere here and the foot is here, uh, but the, yeah, it's weirdly shaped. This is actually better, but still it's kind of squished here. Let's see how it actually looks just as the model file, because that's going to tell you how, how good it is actually. So let's, can we disable the shade here? This is the, the actual 3D model, the grid. You see, this is how, this is what you're actually getting, right? So the rest is just the uh, texture, and this is the underlying 3D model. So that looks still like mm, very much blobby, and right. So as soon as you colorize it and to put the texture over it, it looks very much better. But you are tricked into believing, hey, this is actually looking very realistic, whereas like the real underlying thing is, yeah. This is, if you would model this yourself, it is very much simplistic still. So you see, that, that is what you can currently expect. Now, one last thing that I want to show you, which is also impressive. Uh, let's pick uh, something from Google. So let's say uh, we're going to take, um, I don't know, let's take a motorcycle. 
um, just because we were using this. And let's take any, any kind of random motorcycle. So, is this an image that we can save? Yes. We're gonna take this image and we are gonna throw it into um, this Hugging Face page, which is using a model that's called Instant Mesh. So we're gonna upload this picture and this AI model is taking an image and it's trying to make a 3D model from the image. So it's not prompted by using words, but it's more, um, it's basically prompted by the image. So it's trying to figure out what's like, what could be the other side of the thing looking like and taking that information and trying to make a 3D model of that. And first step is removing the background. So you see the shadow is gone in the first step and then the next step is going to be generating the 3D model. And it's actually pretty fast. So you see, this is the imagination of how this motorcycle might look from behind. It gives you different images. It's giving you the, the model. So it takes, a, it takes a few seconds to load. And that's the, the model file. I'm not sure if it's gonna be uh, highest resolution, but this is what you're getting, right? So this is the this is created from the image, and you see this was super super fast. So it was like just a couple of seconds to create this, and we just had as an input we just had this motorcycle picture. Even though it is also not super high like resolution and detail here, this is just a preview file, but it's a different approach. It's still working. From here, my imagination is it's only going to become better. It's, there's no way back. Last but not least, I want to show you something that is a little different uh, in terms of the approach. So if you want to do photogrammetry, like I see, I've, I've shown you this on the channel already. I had a couple of videos about this. So basically what you do is you take dozens of pictures from all of kind of di different positions from, from something that you want to scan. And then you run it through a program that is a photogrammetry software and it does triangulate all of the points and cre creates an image uh, and it creates a 3D model from this and this is what uh, this is what is happening here with these two different websites they basically do the same thing they take images from a video or a series of pictures and then they photogram they use photogrammetry essentially to create a 3D asset from this and then you can basically just walk around the thing and very much very similar to what you get from Meshroom. So in a way that isn't so much AI-ish, it's more like photogrammetry and there is, there's AI methods that can improve this result. So there is definitely AI that can help with photogrammetry now that's improving the speed of photogrammetry and sometimes it can even imagine things that haven't been there, but um, it is still relies on the original pictures that you give the system or the video that you give the system, right? And then you can walk around. But the, f the thing is you have to be able to walk around the thing that you actually want to convert into something. And that's why I'd say here you see the process here. It's, it's demonstrated very much what you know already probably from the photogrammetry approach. And what you can do with AI is you can take the first, let's say, iteration of the photogrammetry result and then refine the result with AI and have the AI basically imagine what the high detail version of the thing should look like, right? So it's very much the same. And this is, this is uh, available through Maker World. It's just from Bamboo Labs website for, I think it's for free actually. It doesn't, doesn't require you to pay. And this here, I guess there's also some kind of free version of this available so but this is this is where you need access to the real world data and you need access to the images right yeah let me know if you have any if you have any more ideas or any more websites that you know which are doing the same thing or something similar because i'm always interested to test out the new stuff and we'll definitely want to print something like this well so we what we could do is we could print a pic i think i actually like this one more maybe you should actually this not sure if I like this one more or this one. We could probably also do the the piggy the piggy cycle and print that. 